Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus on pulmonary lecture number 22, ventilator modes. And from the sticky note found on nursingcamp.com. In my previous lecture, I talked a little bit about the flow of intubation. And intubation is generally, when you think about what when a person is being intubated, what we're really doing is taking over ventilation for them. And the main reason we're taking over is because they're in respiratory failure. And we talked about that, how a patient generally presents in respiratory distress first, and they primarily will have you know, signs and symptoms of, um, of uh, respiratory distress, like tachycardia, restlessness, pallor, and so on. The later signs are actually, uh, as a patient's respiratory rate starts to drop, we said that you know when a patient gets to 10 to 8, Eight is generally intubate, but we still need to know, you know, um, from our ABGs, you know, is a person really need to be intubated or not? And then we have intubation um, related uh, blood gases, which are here, down here. Well, then we talked about how a person will generally go with it um, when they're going to be intubated. Um, we get an ET tube and then we, uh, we're going to sedate that patient um, to intubate because otherwise we need to suppress that gag reflex um, as we're going down and passing through the vocal cords. And then we said that um, the patient CO2 detector is checked and then we're gonna check the lung sounds to see that they're bilateral, ultimately just ch checking for a chest X-ray. Now, now we're getting to ventilator modes and with the NCLEX, you know, the, you know, Ventilator modes is just a basic understanding of it. I cover it more in my ICU lectures, but this focus of ventilator modes for NCLEX and nursing is um, very, very basic, just an understanding of what we're dealing with, and you see it more in school. All right, so let's talk about the different modes. Well, the first one is assist control. Now, assist control is a preset rate, okay? so. A preset rate which means um, now you have to understand a little bit about um, respiration so with an increase of respirations you're gonna have a decrease of CO2 right conversely if you decrease the respirations you'll have a increase of CO2 so you think about this the way I think about this is think about a sleep apnea person a sleep apnea person has absent breaths at night because they have a decreased respiratory rate, they retain more CO2 in the morning. So they wake up very tired. And as they start to walk throughout the day, they blow off the CO2 and then they start to feel okay. That's why a CPAP machine works. But this respiration is a big key. So when you have somebody who's on assist control, there's a preset rate. And that rate might be dependent on their blood gases. And um, they can be anywhere from 12 to 20, depending on what the patient is. So that's not that important as far as knowing that. But you can assume that you know changes in respiration rate is based on CO2 level. Okay, next thing is there's a preset rate and there's also a set tidal volume. And what I mean by that, that's the volume of lung space okay so the tidal volume is the amount of a breath now generally you know say so 500 would be smaller 800 would be a lot you know bigger person and that's how that works and with the AC you know despite what the patient wants to do they're gonna get these breaths they're gonna get exactly what it's delivered so if you have an AC of 12 they're getting 12 breaths a minute no matter what they do they're also going to get, if they have a tidal volume of 650, they're going to get 650. So all control is kind of what it's about. It really just says you're getting this right now. So that patient needs to be sedated because that patient can buck the vent or breathe above the vent. And, you know, they can get alkalotic. And, you know, so you really want to make sure that that patient is sedated. The next one is... Uh, SM, SIMV. And the difference between SIMV is, is that it's also a preset rate and it's also going to have a preset volume. And 
you know, despite, now the difference with this is, is that, you know, it helps support the patient. It doesn't allow the patient to overbreathe the ventilator. So what would happen is, is that that patient would start to breathe and then the ventilator will take over and support that volume. Um, it's more of a weaning mode versus AC. AC is initial mode generally what a patient is initially put on, right? and then they are switched over. The next one is pressure support. Now pressure support is definitely a, um, a weaning mode. And we use it to wean the patient because you know the patient basically controls the, uh, the rate and the volume. And the ventilator will just basically support that volume going. So another thing we look at is tidal volume. And we talked about tidal volume as, you know, what is the volume in the lungs. And that de is dependent on patient size. Now FiO2, now we said that room air is 21%. Okay? We went through nasal cannulas in a previous lecture, venti mass in a previous lecture. We said that the, the increased FiO2 is responsible. Well. 100% oxygen is toxic to the body. So a patient that is on 100% oxygen, we generally want to decrease it as soon as possible. Then what we'll do is, is that um, we'll start to move them from 100% and move them down. Generally at about 40%, they're starting to get ready to be extubated. So less than 40%, because you can move to a nasal cannula or a face mask with 40%. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is PEEP. Now PEEP is um, like, think of an essential spirometer for the ventilator. It basically pops open the alveoli. Okay, and that's what it does. It keeps a positive pressure, positive expiratory pressure in the, in the system. And it's basically like a, a incentive spirometer for the ventilator. The big thing about PEEP is it decreases blood pressure. And it's problematic for ICP patients because it increases pressure. Okay, so when a person is intubated, you'll get a chest x-ray. And then you're going to draw another ABG, usually within an hour, to evaluate, is it on the right mode? Are we changing what's down here? Because a set rate might be AC of 14, tidal volume 650, FiO2 of 80% um, and a PEEP of 5. So those are ventilator settings. Now, if after an hour, this person's PCO2 is still greater than 50, we're probably going to raise this rate right here. And this is the rate. Because by raising the rate, they'll blow off CO2. And that's kind of how it works. If this oxygen is, is in the 80%, remember the PaO2 is 80 to 100. So if we draw a blood gas in an hour later and this blood gas comes back 84, well, they're oxygenating okay. So we're gonna start to decrease this FiO2. And then, if the tidal volume is, is accurate, you know, that's kind of um, uh, based on the patient's size. So more, more, most likely, we generally will change the, the rate and the FiO2. And remember, 40% is generally uh, room for extubation, but always look at your patient. So some basic things to remember when you're looking at vent settings. And generally what I do in class and what I talk about with students is when you're looking at the patient, just look at what the vent settings are. And then look at what their ABGs are and try to figure out, you know, why they increased and why they decreased. And based on that, we will uh, make a decision um, because if you see a ventilation goes down to 12, that means that they were blowing off too much CO2 and so on. ABGs are great because they are basically... Uh, uh, analysis and please see my um, 
ABABAB video on ABG in interpretation. And when we're looking at ventilator settings, and especially with with modes and the NCLEX, um, you just have to have a general idea about this. And just a general idea of what would be happening. What's a weaning mode? What's FIO2, PEEP, and those type of things. Um, in my next lecture, I'm going to talk about what to do with a ventilator and what are the, some of the alarms that we need to be worried about. All right, that's it. My name is Camp and this is Nursing Camp. That was Ventilator Modes and we'll talk to you next time.